Hello and welcome back. This is Candace from Candoodle, and today I'm back with the last installment of my Avery L. Peekaboo boat series, this time with a fun interactive cart. This video is also part of our Team Tiny interactive hop, which I'll talk a bit more about later in this video. So let's get started. So off screen, I have done some die cutting using the Lawn Fawn stitched border waves, and I've just cut those from 110 pound cardstock. One goes about halfway up the card base and the other one goes halfway up that. And these we are gonna ink blend in a second. And this is all gonna be for a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card, which is gonna be horizontal. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do some ink blending on my Ocean Waves pieces. And I'm using Distress Oxides in Salty Ocean and Mermaid Lagoon. And I'm just blending that on to keep the lighter color, which is Salty Ocean, toward the top and Mermaid Lagoon toward the bottom. You can't see a huge difference here on camera, but in real life it does give it a little bit more dimension. And I'm just using a piece of scrap paper from my die cutting under my hand so I don't get any fingerprints in my ink. I come in with my spray bottle as usual and just pick that up with a paper towel. And then on the card base, I am going to use my My Favorite Things cloud stencil and a life-changing blender brush along with some tumbled glass distress oxide just to give a nice cloudy background to our little boat scene. So once that's done, I'm going to do the stamping and I've just got the boat, the whale, and the whale's little fin set up in my Misty and I'm going to use some Gina K amalgam ink because we are going to be Copic coloring these. And as always, I do stamp it down twice to make sure I get a good impression. For today's Copic coloring, I wanted to do something a little bit different since you've already seen me color this boat twice before. And if you haven't seen my previous videos in this series, I will link them at the top for you to watch. So I did do the same thing for the water below with the waves and for the whale spout, but I did change up the color for the whale this time and I wanted to do a different Copic technique for the actual boat. So I'm from Canada and I grew up going to a cottage in Muskoka, which is the epitome of beautiful Canadian cottage country. And every time we went to the marina, there would always be these really, really fancy boats that I'm sure cost a ton of money and they were wood green. And I'd always thought that they were so fascinating and so pretty. So I wanted this boat to look like that. And I'll insert a picture so you know what I'm talking about if you've never seen one of these before. But as a kid, I thought that they were so cool. So I wanted to try out that texture and that sort of coloring on this boat. So usually these boats have sort of a silver trim. So that is what I'm doing um, for the trim on this one. And I wanted to make it a deeper silver than I used on some of my previous ones. So I am using my N Copics, which I'm getting a lot of use out of these days. And then we are going to go in and do the wood grain texture afterwards. I did follow a tutorial from Kelly Latavola, who is now Kelly Taylor. She does her wood grain a bit different, but that's where I originally learned how to. She likes to include like notches and things like that, which I think is so cool, but I didn't have a ton of surface area to work with, so I just did a simple straight wood grain texture for this one. So I start by coming in with my lightest color, which is E53, and I'm just doing a simple coat over the whole thing with that. And then once that is done, I'm going to come in with my second darkest color because I'm a little bit risk averse and I'm just going to put in some really, really simple lines and you want to use a very light pressure. So your marker is just barely grazing the page. That way it's going to make some really thin lines. Once I'm happy with how that looks, I'm going to come in with my darkest color and you could totally start off with your darkest color. But again, I was risk averse and I didn't want to mess it up. And then I'm going to come in with my second and darkest color and just go right over those lines and extend them out a little bit more and then my third darkest color and I'm going to extend them out just a little bit more than last time and then I'm going to glaze everything over with my lightest color. So I hope that makes sense. It's basically just going from darkest to lightest but you're really not trying to blend anything. You're just doing simple lines that kind of overlap with each other and it gives it this wood grainy sort of texture. It's not perfect. I definitely need a lot more practice but I thought it turned out okay for this being my first time trying this. So a little bit about Team Tiny while we're here. Team Tiny is a group on Facebook of paper crafters who are newer to YouTube and all have under a thousand subscribers so we are all trying to grow our subscriber base once or twice a month we like to get together and do these hops. It's a great way for people to find new channels of paper crafters. Everybody is super, super talented and wonderful. So I would definitely encourage you to click on that hashtag and hop along to see what all of my other 
fellow creatives have made this month, and our theme this time is interactive cards. I'm super excited to see what everybody else makes because this is one of my absolute favorite types of cards. So back to the coloring for the whale this time. I had colored it in black last time using neutral Copics, but this time I wanted to use blues. So I came in with three different shades of blues, and as you can see, my lightest color was a bit too light, so I did just glaze right back over it with the medium tone color. So that's going to give me a little bit lighter than just the medium alone, but not as light as the lightest color. So once I was happy with that, I colored the belly just with N0, and then I colored the fin and the little spout at the top. And that is all for my Copic coloring, and then we are going to move on to doing the card assembly. So I have all of my pieces here, and I'm just showing how they're going to line up. We are going to cut a pull tab slider into this. So I'm just mapping out where I would like it to be and those two pull pieces you could just cut normal cardstock but I did use a die that I had which is from the My Favorite Things launch party because I really like the way it rounds the edge. So I'm just coming in with my X-Acto knife and cutting a channel into that back wave piece and I'm just using my scissors to snip at the sides and once I am happy with that I'm going to move on to assembling. So I'm lining up my pull tab where I would like it to sit behind there, and then you could pop this up on your card with foam tape, but I try and avoid having two layers of foam tape, especially if it's something I'm going to put through the mail. I find putting paper behind is more sturdy. So my pull tab piece is actually two layers of 110 pound cardstock. So behind my entire wave, I'm going to stack three layers of 110 pound cardstock, and I just find that this works perfect to give it enough room to pull but it doesn't create too much bulk like foam tape would again you could totally use foam tape this is just my own preference and i like to use up my cardstock scraps wherever i can so i'm just making sure that i have a nice even layer of paper behind there you could have done it all in one piece but again i was trying to use up scraps so mine was in pieces once I am done with that, I'm just going to use some copy paper to create a bit of a belly band to go around that pull tab, and I'm just using some double-sided tape to stick that together, and then I'm going to put some on one side, put it over my pull tab, and then I'm going to put that where I would like it to sit, and then push down. So now my pull tab is functioning well and how I want it to, and I'm sorry my camera is doing some weird exposure things. I think I have this figured out now though, so it shouldn't be a problem in future videos. So. Sorry about that. I'm just using some double-sided tape to adhere this down to the card base. I use tape around where the mechanism is and then glue towards the top just because I didn't want any glue to squirt out and affect that mechanism at all. And as you can see, it's working well there, so we're going to move on. So I'm just lining up my boat where I would like it to be and sit on the card to see if I need to cut any of that wave off, which I do cut off a little bit towards the bottom, which you'll see later. And then I'm taking my piece of acetate because this is the way that I like to hide my slider tracks on my cards. So I just attached with some very strong double-sided tape a piece of acetate just towards the top of whatever it is I'm trying to move. And I almost forgot to put my whale in there, but I did remember and then I just added some additional tape on the back of the whale before adhering the acetate to the boat and the whale. So once that is pushed down, I'm going to check to make sure it holds nice and tight, and then I'm going to check to see if it is sliding the way that it should, and that it got caught a little bit, so I knew I needed to pull my wave down a little bit more, but not enough that the track is going to be revealed. So I just snipped a little bit off of the bottom with my paper trimmer, and then I'm putting it back, and it moves much more smoothly. So I am going to make sure I like where that is, and then I'm going to trim off any of the additional acetate, which I should have trimmed off a bit more, so you're going to see me kind of haphazardly trimming as I go, um, because there needs to be foam tape at the side, which I forgot about initially. Um, so now I'm putting my foam tape on that slider piece, because that is what's going to attach to the acetate and make the boat actually move. So then I'm coming in with my wave and making sure everything lines up, and I'm just using pencil marks to indicate where that wave goes up to so I know where I need to be putting the foam tape. And again, here's me realizing that there is pieces of acetate sticking out. So I'm just going to put some foam tape, and it fits perfectly right under there, and I didn't even measure that, so that worked out really well. And then I'm just making sure one last time everything fits before I remove the release paper. And then I just push down that wave so to make sure it's adhered, and it is working well. 
And then I realized I forgot to put the whale's little fin on, so I did that. And then I am going to stamp a sentiment. So at this point, I really don't want to mess up after all this work. So I did use my Misty Creative Corners, and I'm also going to use my little trick, which is tracing paper. So I put tracing paper over my card to protect it and stamp down. That way, if it isn't quite lined up the way I like it or I'm not in love with it, I still have time to move it around without ruining my card after all this work. Once I'm happy with it, I do stamp it down twice. And then that is the final card. I hope you enjoyed making this interactive card and that you've liked this series. You'll have to let me know down in the comments if you're interested in more of these one stamp set three ways type series. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and hit that subscribe button. It really helps my channel to grow. I have so many exciting things planned for the upcoming months that I hope you'll stick around and enjoy. As always, you can find me over on Instagram at Candoodle Creations, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!